So I have just emerged from an in-person meeting of a group of academics and we were taken up with two aspects of the learning process that has happened in the last two years. One, the emotional stress and trauma that teacher and taught alike have had to undergo right through the two years and how it has affected learning, how it will affect learning in the future. And two, what are the inferences, learnings, and insights that we have acquired because of technology? Has it been an aid? Was it just a mechanical substitute for what would have been a good in-person experience? Or is there a future that we could build on? And I would like the panelists to look at our discussion today a little bit from these two perspectives because whether it's a pandemic or something else, students do undergo stress. Institutions do suffer for all kinds of reasons. I mean, in, in a certain part of the world right now, there is a war that is looming. In fact, it has begun. I'm sure learning has been badly affected. And I'm told that students in India too are also affected, traumatized because they're far more aware of what happens in different parts of the world. So my my own experience in, in, in this matter of technology-based learning is that it has needlessly acquired a bad name. I can just mention very briefly three experiments that I have conducted. From The first was in 1992, when there was no talk of technology-based education. And I conducted an experiment with Doordarshan National. They wanted to test a new technology, satellite technology for broadcasting. <coughs> and we decided decided to <coughs> broadcast live six school lectures of the 12th grade on calculus, 40 minutes each, one day, one lecture a day for six consecutive days. But the advantage was that this was these lectures were accessible to all of India <coughs> on national television. And they they had 12 classrooms in different parts of the country where the students could interrupt me live through a telephonic arrangement so that they could ask questions. They were given the opportunity to interrupt at any stage when I was speaking. And they asked lots of questions. And I really enjoyed it, but I had no idea how these things went. Until a month later, Doordarshan called me over to the studio <coughs> and they showed me a room full of sacks of mail. Those were three email days and there were sacks and sacks of mail and they told me this is your fan mail. Take a look at this. Of course, I couldn't go through all of them. They were from all parts of the country. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but I went through about 30, 40 of those letters randomly picked. I remember they were from Assam, Kerala, Bombay, small cities, Kashmir, Delhi, everywhere. And I could see three common refrains. One, they said, why, would, why did you stop them? Two, for the first time, we have understood and enjoyed calculus. And three, why don't our teachers teach like this? Why am I telling you this? Not to heap praise on my own efforts, but the point that this simple technology, such crude technology, I was in a studio that had two huge cameras, one above my head, one in front of me. I used to stand in front of a giant desk and I would just write on the desk with three colored chart paper pens, blue, red, and green. And here was the success that we had with that experiment. And so I realized the power of technology for the first time in 92 and I had had no interest in education before that. I was dragged into that experiment, but I realized how fruitful it was for me. The second experiment I conducted, again, this is another aspect of technology. A colleague of mine, a very gifted mathematician, and I <coughs> built a totally artificial intelligence-based calculus learning lesson. It took us a great deal of effort and a huge amount of funding. But a whole lesson on how to learn the calculus with some basic things. This was meant again for 12th grade students. And then we went to a very prominent school of Delhi. <coughs> In this school known for the number of students it used to get into the IIT programs each year, we conducted a simple experiment. We took 
50 students who had just sat for the IIT entrance exam. And we asked the school to prepare two identical same level calculus question papers which were of a good nature. We gave those 50 students <coughs> those that question paper and asked them to fill it as best as they could, respond as best as they could based on all the preparations they had done for the IIT entrance. Then we locked them in a lab and gave them access to this artificial intelligence desktop system that we had created. And at the end of some time, they went through a similar test again. And we saw that the average performance had shot up remarkably. More interestingly, once again, the students said that we enjoyed and understood calculus for the first time. They had not really understood it while preparing for the IIT. No teacher was involved. That's my second important learning. And my third learning was when I undertook an experiment <coughs> of a different kind. I collected a bunch of students in Bangalore and in Delhi. And again, we just used very basic technology. Got them to look at some lessons on YouTube about how six, these were sixth grade students how they could use the rays of the sun, a little bit of knowledge on parallel lines that they had read on their own and measure the circumference of the earth jointly between the students of Delhi and Bangalore. Once again, the feedback was so encouraging. All I'm trying to say is that technology offers us great many opportunities and I just want to set the tone now and ask my panelists one by one to try and see if they could use this or have their own views and we'll take the discussion forward. Thank you. So could I ask my next panelist? Uh, we request Dr. Bhima Rai Maitri to please contribute. Thank you very much. Uh, thank uh, uh, Professor uh, Dinesh Singh Ji and my other fellow colleagues, uh, Sudarshan Ji, Professor Janesh Shah, I think uh, the topic, uh, the new world and new way of learning. So I think it is a great topic. And uh, in this continuously changing world, a speed of change has taken over the size of the organization. <coughs> and also the technological disruption is happening very often continuously like a flowing water. Old is not dead, new is not born, always we are in a transition stage. In this kind of physical world, physical and digital, in this kind of digital world, now what kind of learning is going to work out? The traditional way of teaching or pedagogy is not going to work out. And also the hybrid is going to be the continuous phenomena and it is going to be the future. So in this kind of situation, there are two, three ways one can look into the new way of learning. Number one, I think today what we are doing, evaluation, it is a stone age. Probably one may get a 90 or 95, 99 marks, but if you test their ability, competency, capability, it is, it is a question mark. Because it doesn't test the tenacity, doesn't test the, uh, the courage, the curiosity, the confidence, the risk-taking ability. These are not tested by our current examination system. So that is where what I see, Suggest is number one. I think the the today's technological world, this the games gamification is going to be one important pedagogy where the teaching and uh, basically while teaching are probably I can say learning and evaluation happen simultaneously. The two teams are four or five teams are two teams working together for a particular game. Probably one or two rounds. Team A may lose and Team B may win. And after remaining rounds out of 10, 8 rounds, B may lose and A may win. So at the end of the 10 or 12 rounds, one can make out as a team how courageous, how tenacity, how they change their strategy and what kind of uh, you know, risks they took and, and continuously, constantly watching at the competition, uh, what kind of adjustment, changes, courage, confidence, all those they test. At the same time, they see the different kind of situation. Every round, 
and looking at the competitor situation, they adjust and they change. And this brings the phenomena based learning. And this phenomena based learning helps to the growth of mindset. You know, today's uh, education system, we only talk about, uh, you know, the, 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 the capacity building or we talk about the competency. So competency means skill building, development of skill. Development of skill alone is not sufficient nowadays because the life of the skill has come down. Every disruption, probably new learning, learning and skilling, upskilling, reskilling is required and perpetual learners are going to rule the world. So in this kind of environment, the important thing is not only competency, it is good enough. The capability building is extremely important. Growth up. Development of mindset growth and development of skill, these two are important, even though knowledge is coming from Google. And that is where in the higher education system, particularly management schools, what I think is it is extremely important how to make students to learn with the development of growth mindset. Agility is going to be the important phenomena, rigidity, stupidity. So in this kind of physical world, the gamification simulations these are the new pedagogies they are the one putting the student at the center place of learning and they experience the phenomena they change the strategy and they work out the strategy again they take a turn make a decision how to make a decision what decision what kind of impact all those things the gamification are uh, while gaming while playing a game maybe online gain, offline gain, using technology, simulation games, they learn a lot. And that is the one of the new way of learning in this new world. Taking the full advantage of technology, it is possible. And, you know, it is called as a phenomena-based learning or gamification or project-based learning. Another way of learning, probably a group of students doing a project-based learning at the companies. So project-based learning means before going to the company, collect the data, all the information, they, they prepare the plan and proposal. And when they visit the company, maybe in I am Nakko, students go to Singapore and Dubai. And after going there two weeks, they, they talk to the people and they see the things and they work out. So this is how they normally learn the things and that is a project-based learning. So these are the different way of learning. Probably one can get into that and one can take a full advantage of technology. As Professor Dinesh Singh rightly said, technology is going to be there. Change in technology is a constant one. So in such kind of environment, it is extremely important continuously we are evolving our pedagogy on a continuous basis so that learning will continue and students will be at the center place so instead of teaching, learning comes first. That is why learning and teaching. And when I was working in LNT, always, you know, we used to say L stands for learning and T stands for teaching in Larson and Tuboro company because a lot of learning and then those who learn, they teach. And that is what today, instead of teaching and learning, we should be using learning and teaching and we should follow these new methods. So I'll, I'll stop here. And, and also, I request uh, uh, Professor Dinesh Sindhi, sir, I have some other engagement I will be leaving, but these are my two points of thought about new way of learning in this new world. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much for what you said. We have a great deal to think about what you have said, and we will try and deliberate on that. Thank you for your contributions, and let's move on to the next speaker. Thank you so much, Dr. Maitri, for joining us today for the panel discussion. Now we request Mr. Thank Anand, you, thank you. Founder and Director, Silver Advisor, please contribute his ideas. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Professor Singh. We're meeting after a long time. Uh, good afternoon, <laughs> Professor Shah. Uh, good afternoon, <laughs> Professor Kamar. Uh, pleasure to be here. I thank uh, Aima for inviting me uh, to share some of my thoughts. Um, and I did come in at the fag end of uh, um, uh, the conversation, so I did pick up a couple of very interesting points, and I want to start off with laying a foundation of a few points. There are lots of changes that are going to be there, but just four or five very quickly, I wanted to set the base. And given this fairly significant and radical change that's happening in the world, what are some of the anchor points of a new system that can be uh, that can be, you know, thought of. Uh, that technology is a foundational element, is a given now. I think finally it's been uh, uh, understood. 
I think what technology has also done is demonstrated it's possible to increase reach dramatically. Examples that Professor Singh gave were early examples, and the pandemic had uh, played a remarkable, possibly mean, looking at the positive side of things, remarkable role uh, in making sure that the reach uh, of uh, technology, uh, the reach was really all over. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a remarkable shift from come to the campus, stay there, and at, that's as the only model, to a model where reach was profound. Now that in turn brings with it many possibilities. It's another conversation for another session, perhaps, but structurally how institutions can change their programs and use a very inventive combination of in-person because hybrid learning is going to be there forever and a very inventive combination of in-person uh, engagement uh, at campuses along with uh, technology-based over distance um, you know, uh, both asynchronous and synchronous engagement, resulting in a very uh, complex and very uh, uh, interesting new way of doing things. The other uh, very interesting trend that I have been noticing because I've been involved in uh, with uh, some of these players is uh, there is from a, from a perspective of bundling of credentials where so far at least uh, to get a credential like a degree, um, students had to come to an institution where degrees were and, you know, offered in a bundled fashion. Uh, there is an assembling of credentials that has happened. Now, this is not unbundling. This is assembling. And therefore, to that extent, there is a, the choice-based credit uh, system is a good example of a very, very early stage of assembling that's possible. This is way beyond that. And I think technology has enabled assembling of credentials. Uh, the UGC announcements... Uh, of uh, you know dual degree uh, system that can you know potentially come up and so on and so forth are only going to accelerate this for management schools this offers a tremendous opportunity to just rethink themselves completely the mba degree will continue uh, will continue for quite some time to come and uh, it uh, alternative credential assembly of credentials based approach which uh, uh, which uh, which employers and employment uh, as much as students desire is many years away. And I think that's a, part, that's, a, that's a development that needs to be observed carefully. But for now, and for the conceivable future, MBA or equivalent degrees along with that extension of MBA degrees will continue. So the last point that I will make here is a very interesting phenomenon that has happened. There is a new growth of what I call as E to A, ed tech to academia engagement, right? Now, there was a world where academia remained as academia, so B schools remained as B schools, and then there was a tech trying to do all kinds of different things. Over the last few years, and particularly accelerated over the last two years, is this phenomenon of E to A, ed tech to academia, and a new market has actually been, you know, is getting created, where uh, business education, management education is getting now reached to uh, a, a new set of people in a new way for addressing new problem, not just management education. This is, of course, across uh, first just express itself most profoundly in technology-based education, but it's very, very rapidly growing into management education, as you all probably know. And I think this is set for rapid growth, and this op offers a tremendous opportunity for academia to kind of recast themselves and go way beyond the confines of a purely institution-based learning. Or a, or a geographically singly located learning to a very, very different kind of an approach. Now, if these are some of the changes that are coming in, in a, if these are the, some of the parameters uh, of uh, a new system, what are all the, some of the features that can be there uh, in a new system that can be created? Now, the fact of the matter is a new system, systems are getting changed all the time, systems are getting created, and what is going to happen now is a dramatically different system is getting created. Now, Professor Kamar was mentioning, um, you know, as, as students go back to campuses, uh, there may be a resetting of the initial, uh, I would say an extremely limited way of use of technology, and he was absolutely correct. Uh, technology, the way it was used, especially in the first year, I would say, of, uh, of the pandemic, uh, was really an urgent, poor, and the insufficient replacement to the fact that students could not be there in the physical locations. And that's not something that is sustainable and that will roll back. 
Uh, however, certain aspects, again, as you mentioned, certain aspects of use of technology, delivery of content, for example, in interesting new ways, delivery of bytes of content, for example, which are titrated by uh, the professors based on uh, the extent to which they are going to be uh, delivering their uh, uh, their programs, lectures, and so on and so forth, uh, and, and, and all kinds of interesting additional streams of content coming in can be done by technology, and this is a orchestration, the content aggregation and content titrated content delivery is, I think, a, a orchestrated delivery that can be done. And that's the first point that I wanted to talk about. So technology uh, will now enable us to create new systems. Systems today don't allow for that. Sure, they allow for pieces of content to be delivered by the professors at periodic intervals. I'm not talking just about pieces of content. I'm talking about dynamically calibratable uh, delivery of content based on development of a single topic or a thesis in a class as the faculty teacher spends time with the students, you know, calibrating as per the, the learning, you know, velocity that the students have set for themselves that the teacher is able to observe. And therefore, like I said, calibrate the uh, delivery of content, not just the delivery of content, which is structured content that has been built for the program, but that content, which is uh, supported by streams of external content, again, contextually relevant content that comes in. Now, this is a very interesting, and I, personally for me, I can imagine this, and it's a very exciting way of looking at it. It is going to require a very high level of faculty skill. Uh, it is also going to require uh, more work on the technology side than as compared to what is there today. <coughs> but I think this is something that is not too far away and is around the corner. So this is one. Talking about context, I think second part uh, is, is really on what I call as rich encounters. One of the most uh, important and uh, uh, probably understudied aspect of management education uh, is the richness of encounters that students have in a, in a setting, in a physical setting, in the institute, between themselves and with the faculty. And this obviously happens during the classroom. There's a very rich engagement, it typically tends to be an imbalanced kind of an engagement in the sense that the faculty, uh, you know, speaks a lot more in most settings, lots more than the students, but that's not the only place where the engagement happens. Engagement happens, you know, post the class hours with, between the students. Uh, there is engagement that happens with the faculty post the class hours and specific aspects and specific matters. And depending on the extent to which students pick up the power of this ability for rich encounters, their own assimilation of knowledge, experiences, and context increases dramatically. And to me, I would argue, if there is anything which is critical about management education above everything else, it is the teaching of context. Content can be taught, tools and techniques can be taught, not very difficult, but teaching context and therefore Students, once they graduate out of the institutions, are able to go out and express in, in their respective context that they are placed in. That's, that is uh, priceless. And that's something that every institution should strive to give. And I believe very, large, very strongly that such rich encounters, which would have been possible only within, uh, within the campuses, as I described till now, can now be done, supplemented, complemented, and you know, expanded by use of technology, social media, and so on and so forth. And by using emerging new technology, and I don't know where it's going to go, but it's very exciting to read about and imagine about uh, the uh, deeply immersive learning techniques. Metaverse is a good example of that. Deeply immersive learning techniques can potentially give an, an opportunity for uh, the institution and the faculty to create uh, you know, engagement scenarios that are of several orders of magnitude, I believe, superior to the typical case study method that we use, to use today for teaching context. So that's the second point that I wanted to make. Third, and therefore, by using um, techniques such as uh, deep uh, immersive learning, uh, uh, closest that one can come, um, Professor Maitri talked very quickly about students from his institute going to Dubai or Singapore project-based learning, and, and so on and so forth. Those are methods, uh, those are avenues that can provide experiential learning. And I believe the closest that can be done uh, to that 
uh, using still by you know in a within classroom setting or within a class group setting by using technology uh, is actually you know immersive learning and that will therefore further experiential learning a lot uh, fairly significantly actually um, the next part is uh, if and it, this is something that's been happening with management education all the time uh, you get faculty from outside you get faculty to come and speak now using these techniques like such as the zoom uh, conference space that we are in today and so on and so forth uh, i think that can be expanded manifold both by the presence of students uh, exchange of students now they can be virtual and therefore very easy you don't have to be go you know go through complex exchange of you know additional costs and, and, and don't get me wrong uh, physical presence is i'm not saying it's an alternative to physical presence but i'm saying it can complement physical presence substantially and therefore that can become a method to bridge frontiers and uh, management education becomes quite rich uh, as a consequence of that therefore is uh, faculty diversity and richness uh, in addition to the faculty that the institution has got uh, students have an opportunity to engage with uh, and uh, get the benefits of engaging with uh, diverse faculty from across the world and uh, any exposure to diversity will only increase their understanding of nuances of context and better you know equipped a student is to the nuances of context more successful she or he is likely to be once they graduate the portal to the institution go to the real world and organizations who are the who are uh, waiting to recruit these students and grab them or entrepreneurial track that some of the students may 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 decide to take and the the people who will be ready to fund them with capital will really thank the institution for providing students with an ability to understand context context and the nuances of context the other point that i wanted to quickly talk about in terms of feature is the ability for students to understand the concept of scale now scale in a in a classroom in in mba education remains uh, uh, additional two decimal uh, decimals in a in a spreadsheet Uh, really their their idea of what is scale and how to manage scale is very limited i believe again uh, to some extent the the idea of uh, uh, through uh, through through these uh, simulation exercises immersive learning <coughs> the idea of uh, uh, scale and how does it impact people can be taught and i think that can be incorporated as a part of the new systems as well and finally uh one of the interesting new areas i have been reading about recently and i feel that that's something that can be very useful for <coughs> management education is uh, what are called as projective techniques one example of a projective technique <coughs> is uh, uh the faculty actually uh, when when covering a topic uh, teaching a particular topic in context you know context <coughs> giving the first half of a sentence or a paragraph and then requesting the students either by herself or in a group in whatever is the fashion mostly by themselves to actually complete the sentence the objective of the, this is not to assess but the objective of this is to uh, give an opportunity for uh, uh, students to exercise their imagination given an opportunity for them to both deploy because everybody has a set of biases and it is in the, in deploying biases that you learn from the impact of the biases and you start uh, modifying them you know enhancing them whatever is the right thing to do at a point in time depending on the bias so it gives them a chance to deploy the bias gives them a chance to observe from another student who may have completed the same sentence in a quite a different kind of a fashion observe differences coming in now think of this in scale when students are from <clears throat> across multiple countries the differences in culture differences in the way perspectives with which they will look at all of that will profoundly express themselves just this one simple technique and if this can be made as a part and parcel of the new learning system i think that can be something which is very very interesting that can emerge lots and lots more to uh, to share and talk about but i will stop here uh, very very exciting uh, times ahead one way or the other and i look forward to listening to the other thoughts and views as well thank you thank you thank you very much 
I, I could not grasp the last two or three minutes of your very interesting uh, intervention. But what what I have understood, I think this is worthy of enormous study and focus in India. And I, I you mentioned immersion save learning and i think that is a enormously potential field getting into our learning systems the better even this project based learning i think that has consistently been india's tradition in the past what little i've understood we have always believed in project based learning connected to the real world in a practical way somewhere along the line we seem to have forgotten much of that even in management but maybe now with with all these churning that is happening we can bring these things back into focus so thank you very much and now i urge the is this the final speaker that we have uh, miss uh is so we have professor janat shah with us okay great so let's have, let's hear professor shah now professor shah the floor is yours thank you for the dinesh sir you know it was wonderful to hear your opening remarks you know it is great to see the kind of experiments you had done way ahead of the time uh, i'm just going to build on you know what you talked about and my co panelist uh, professor metri and mr sudarshan talked about uh, i'm going to share more in terms of the way we've been looking at some of this our own experiences and i would be honest with the all of you that if you had asked this question 2 years back you know i think me and my faculty colleagues felt that management education has to be a campus based and face to face you know that was the way so obviously you know the last 2 years have taught a lot to us and we've been asking several questions saying that now hopefully we are in a going to soon be in a endemic world what would be the education mean to us in kind of thing and some of the questions which we've been asking is that you know what for example why should student be physically in a campus you know for our premier uh, two year mba program why should the student be in a classroom you know in a in a in a uh, synchronous mode and also a question that if there are let's say institutions like at tech companies like upgrade which is saying that i'm going to give you a mba in a 1 lakh price point why should i be paying you know 18 to 20 lakh for a degree so i think we have asked a lot of this questions and here are our initial thoughts at this point in time one is you know i think obviously we need to uh, use technology whatever you learnt in this last two years but for our flagship program our two year mba and a one year mba we feel face to face a uh, classroom based will remain a dominant mode for us but we must ensure how do we leverage the technology certain ideas which you learned in last you know two years but at the same time this idea that for a different kinds of program we would use a different mix of hybrid nature of this technology so for example lot more program which we work with executives people who are working you know in existing organization especially at middle and senior level probably greater mix of online and you know uh, some bit of physical learning would be useful kind of thing uh but again as i said we have to ask this deeper question how do we make our classroom experience richer earlier essentially we were saying student didn't have a choice and we looked at as the only way of doing it now the way we are looking at is that one we have to make sure that each session is a meaningful experience for a student second can we make sure that we use technology for the time period for which student is not physically present in a campus so that means even before they join the program when they are on a summer internship can we use this in a more meaningful way engagement second even if i am doing in a face to face classroom can i get a you know industry or a international speaker into my classroom using technology which earlier probably would not have thought about it 
third we realize in a management education people come with a different background so if i am teaching something like analytics course you will find different people are at different level is there a way using technology we can actually pitch the course at different levels for a same cohort so i think there are a lot of ideas through which you know we can enhance the quality of experience for a student including the project based learning including collaborative learning where you have a collaboration with schools across the world using technology but we feel for our flagship program you know face to face and a campus based would remain a dominant mode of learning for a premier schools where we have a high quality faculty but i believe for a schools tier 2 and tier 3 in india have a large number of those schools business schools there i think there is a huge opportunity to fundamentally relook at the way education is done because one of the biggest problem the school face is the quality of faculty now today you know it's possible now for example i am bangalore has a several you know moocs program or it could be coursera or it should be upgrade any one of so the institute can relook at the role of a faculty not as a subject matter expert which is what the role today but if i am a tier 2 school i can relook at this whole education where the expertise would come through a technology but i would have a faculty which are more process based which will which will enhance the quality of experience the way collaborate quality of questioning happens quality of quality of collaboration happens so i think it will actually help in reducing the gap between tier 2 and tier 1 schools which is good for a students similarly this whole idea that we going to offer a whole range of you know i'm not just talking about institu- individual institution but for a anybody wants to learn whether you are a you know student or whether you are an executive company essentially this whole idea that you have this whole range available and you can choose the mix which is you know appropriate to you at a life cycle for you you know is so i think in terms of technology is here going to stay the way we are going to use the technology and mix of online and face to face is going to be different across program across institution so it's going to be very interesting in terms of how different institution they're going to you know come up with the different experiments so for example we have decided that we're going to set up a center for learning we're going to get somebody who who actually comes from a you know theory of learning and help faculty and students ask several questions that how do we enhance the quality of learning using a technology because you know traditionally as a faculty what we used to do is to our role models were you know our own teachers kind of thing who were star teachers but today you know we can actually bring certain theory of learning which traditionally we have not taken into account also some of the experiments you know which mr sudarshan talked about you know this deep immersive learning i think there are a lot of experiments need to be done because i don't think we are there yet so encouraging a lot more experimentation in our courses is going to be the way for future so it's a exciting world but it's not going to be either or it's going to be a mix of all these modes and it's going to be fascinating how different institutions are going to experiment with these ideas and i'm also hoping somewhere our regulators will give a let more freedom to experiment several of these models so let me stop here at this point in time and we can you know continue this discussion as we go along thank you professor shah i i really enjoyed your intervention it was very insightful and i would love to agree with almost everything that you have said what whatever i have understood i i just i am not sure if we are allowed to throw this open to people who would like to ask questions is the format does the format permit that miss uh, so we already have one question here uh, which is addressed to uh, uh, sudarshan sir 
but apart from that also uh, i think we have time about to see go ahead and ask that we have 15 minutes okay. left uh, you can actually ask questions from your side to the respected panel present okay. including professor so, so people are most welcome to send in their questions and uh, we would be happy to take them to the panelists one by one and we'll try and handle as many as we can i just wanted to add one thing you know i have always over a long period of time had this feeling that the whole world is a university the whole world is a learning environment and the sooner we acknowledge this within our own selves and within our institutions and policy making bodies the better it is one of the big advantages of technology is that it allows you to do that better and i think that we must allow our students also to take advantage of this by giving some kind of recognition accreditation some kind of respectability to their own experiences related to no matter what discipline i'm not just talking about management but no matter what discipline if we devise ways and means a fair amount of credit can be accumulated along those lines and i let me just illustrate as an example suppose for the sake of argument i have a huge industrial enterprise that handles many aspects of human endeavor production hospitality airline etc etc i bet you my last dollar if i were to take a student who has a certain degree of you know perceptive ability a certain alertness a certain ability to be curious and say collect five or such students and tell them to go three months by three months or a certain amount of time each uh, each of those industrial uh, enterprises should provide them with an immersive experience and maybe a year or two later you will find that they've had a far better experience of education than our in classroom teaching believe you me and i'll give you an example so i'm sure we have all heard of dyson engineering dyson who's sort of a phenomenally successful billionaire who has you know he started off with vacuum cleaners and he's gone into many things he's himself an inventor we set up an institute of engineering called the dyson institute of engineering it's a full fledged university more than half the learning happens to practical projects in his industrial enterprise because he has a wide variety of things to offer and they are given full credit for what they experience over there the students and they work in groups on projects we also have done this at the university of delhi i created an undergraduate pro program called b tech humanities design your degree and of course technology was a huge player over there at the same time we allowed students to gain experiences through projects that they devised with the help of mentors the mentor could be any part of the world and more than half the credit came to them simply through these experiences and industry now that we have technology at our disposal it gives us that much more power and that much more freedom to do some of these things and it would be nice if we could start taking cognizance of that into our own formal learning systems but you know it's the hardest thing to change is an educational setup there is a joke in the united states amongst university presidents how many professors does it take to change a light bulb <laughs> what you're talking of change <laughs> so so it's very hard but i think we should keep trying in our own gentle persuasive ways and maybe you know platforms like this can help encourage bring about a certain degree of change in the thought processes at least that's the first prerequisite so can we just take a look at the questions is it possible sure sir uh, so there's a, a question for uh, uh, sudarshan sir sir would you like to answer that yeah i'll be happy to Uh, the question is how are we going to cope up with the cost of metaverse learning techniques and do we have competent people to create such learning experience i mean a very relevant question the moment you talk about uh, deep changes 
the immediate answer comes up, uh, you know, who's going to bear the cost. Now, there are two things here. Uh, number one is, uh, you know, I spoke about E to A, ed tech to academia. I think the important for us to recognize that academia doesn't have to be in splendid isolation any longer. Uh, and management education can take advantage of this E to A. And ed tech companies, very nicely funded, you know, so long as there is the requirements are very clearly understood by them, will be more than happy to make the investments in really creating, uh, you know, uh, either in metaverse or some other mechanism of uh, simulated and deeply immersive learning. And I think that investment will have to come. And plus the fact is management institutes among educational institutions are probably the ones uh, which are uh, uh, which have better surplus as compared to many of the others. So I think institutions themselves can pick up some of the investment slack. So that shouldn't be a problem. Now, do they have competence in this area? Obviously, right now, there is no competence. It's a very, very brand new area. And uh, to, to a very large extent, it's going to be discovery. Remember, when the pandemic struck us and the announcement was made to close the campuses, nobody had a clue. And within a very short order, uh, you know, faculty of different kinds, of course, that's at a very base level, picked up the, uh, the, uh, uh, the capabilities, basic capabilities that are required. I think we should not underestimate the capability, both in terms of, you know, creating content. Our faculty are perfectly capable, provided they have the necessary nudge and incentive. We have to handle, uh, you know, faculty always with a combination of a nudge and incentive. And so long as you have a nudge and incentive, uh, you know, they will pick up the capabilities very, very quickly. And the younger faculty are, are all, uh, you know, digital. Uh, they're not a digital natives, but certainly... Uh, they are very, very digitally comfortable, and therefore their ability to uh, pick up the thread on this is not going to be difficult at all. So over a, over a few, I would say two to three years, we would be able to build reasonable capability. And then the creativity will flower. And what more interesting things can, that can be done, you know, avatars, for example, is a useful technique uh, that can be used to create different ways of doing things. How can avatars be used? In, in teaching uh, what and and, the, and and more and more we start moving to more, towards teaching context and the nuances of context and less and less to teaching tools and techniques i think more and more interesting things will happen i think i don't think that's too much of a difficulty for people to pick up the capabilities over a period of time i hope that answers the question yes it does i think that's very well put your answer i think uh, it must have clarified the questioner's mind uh are there any other questions? Uh, Professor Singh, we have exactly about uh, seven minutes left for the session. So I think uh, we will uh, ask uh, Professor Kamar to please uh, give his uh, comment on the topic of the discussion. And then okay. after we request you to uh, conclude the session, please. Okay, go ahead. go ahead. Thank you very much. I think it was wonderful being in this session. And one thing that I noticed was that there is gradually emerging a kind of convergence. Earlier, while we were speaking of either an or situation, so mm -hmm. the moment you spoke about anything that could be a replacement of the teacher, there would be a retort that that is an impossibility and technology can never be a substitute to teacher. I think on the both sides, there have been some concessions given to each other. And now we are reaching to the conclusion that yes, technology is a good tool to enable improving quality, to communicate better, to mitigate the limitations which humans in the conventional chart and talk method had. And on the other hand, on the technology side also, there is a realization that yes, these brick and mortar institutions of higher education, there is still not time to write their obituaries. They are going to exist and they are going to leverage technology to deliver their content better. I think in terms of the new world that we are seeing, I think uh, our thinking is also constrained by the fact of the existing knowledge that we have. So all the future that we are predicting is based on the experiences so far and the learning so far, but maybe the new world may be altogether a different kind of world posing altogether different kinds of challenges. So say for example, uh, 
if the new world is also likely to present before us a situation where humans would not be needed to do the jobs all the jobs would be done by machines if not all the jobs at least the repetitive jobs would be done by machines maybe even the higher order thinking and the decision making may not need the human brains perhaps the machine learnings or some kind of algorithm would also be able to throw up uh, if not the final decisions at least out of so many possibilities two or three decisions and i think our challenge is not only adopting to technology but also to preparing our people to be able to brace to be able to ready with all those kinds of uncertainties that may be before us in future a third point that comes to my mind is that i think a decision has to be taken by us meaning within the country that whether we want to be just happy and satisfied being a consumer of knowledge or we want to play a dominant role in the creation and production of knowledge i think that will be too bad to be settled with just being a consumer of knowledge india has large potential india has a history that offers many things to the world and i think we need to play a proactive role in being the production of knowledge and from that point of view i think that the moment we make any suggestion that the teachers deficit could be substituted or could be replaced by the technology and therefore you need not have as many teachers as you needed i think that would be to me a disaster if you see the vision document of the best universities in the world and we are now benchmarking ourselves with the best universities the they all use technology they are in fact far better in using technology and leveraging technology for delivering their products uh, and services but none of them are targeting to reduce the number of teachers on their campuses so if earlier they had a student teacher ratio of 1 is to 8 or 8 is to 1 sorry now they are targeting to have 5 one uh, is to 5 so one teacher for every five students why are they doing that they want to play the lead role as a producer of knowledge as a monopoly of knowledge and where all future developments are going to be based on knowledge i think that investment is necessary so we need to invest in technology we need to leave the technology but we also need to keep on investing in good quality teachers to remain to do research maybe part of the repetitive things which teachers do could be relegated to technology or could be facilitated by using the technology and lastly i would say that yes edtech had had some scope i think uh, many of the iams in management education have been making use of these edtech companies to offer their uh, online distance or virtual programs but the way the number of edtechs are rising and they are becoming a kind of uh, uh, sudarshan ji you mentioned the term assembler i think they are uh, trying to work as an aggregator like ola and uber a kind of a thing that okay i don't own, own any hotel i don't own any car but still i have access to so many cars so they are all becoming an aggregator so as an aggregator they can play an important role in so far as the consumers of the knowledge are concerned but they will not be able to play an important role as far as the research knowledge production are concerns so it was pleasure being here in fact initially i was caught off the guard i thought that the keynote is part of the panel but then the keynote happened earlier than the panel so i missed your faces to see the responses to what i said but thank you very much for giving me opportunity at this level and nice to see professor dinesh singh and professor janasha and professor metri and uh, uh, anand sudarshan ji after a very very long time and to have such a immersive discussion experience and i must appreciate the nation ji that like you are uh, traveling in a car 
but it appears that in our country the roads and the cars have become better because i don't see any bumps <laughs> i don't see any lights so <laughs> appreciation great appreciation i need we need to go out to experience this i don't know on what <laughs> road you are so but it was a pleasure so thank you very much and over to you uh, the chairperson of the panel or to the organizer Uh, I thank you very much, Furkan. Boy, it was such a delight to hear you again after a quite a gap. You were your lively and stimulating, and I think this session will come and bring about a fair amount of good because all our minds have been provoked. I just wanted to add one interesting facet with with your indulgence. You know, about eight nine years ago, they conducted a survey amongst teaching faculty in the United States on what they thought of the, uh, education being based on technology learning. Online and otherwise technology, and 90% of them responded that it's a bad idea. There are major issues, including quality. Then the same cohort was asked in complete confidence, give us the real reason, and more than 70% said they were scared they'll lose their jobs. <laughs> so, so we need we need to keep that also in mind. You know, this happened in the U.S. about eight years ago or so, something like that. No, but like uh, two years being in the uh, online mode, interacting with our students, I think not only myself but all of my colleagues uh, everywhere in the university. When you talk to your students, they somehow want to come back on the campus. So I don't know whether it's a socialization need or there is something that they are actually uh, missing that they are not getting in the online mode. so it is not only the uh, i mean although they had all the conveniences uh, they were attending the classes from their beds uh, from between their home without leaving uh, travel uh, but there is something about teaching and about these teacher student interaction uh, that perhaps we fail to understand and we still do not know how does it play out sorry i interrupted in between Uh, no not at all not at all i think it was very welcome you know i belong to a whatsapp group of a large number of students uh, ex students of st stevens college very senior most of them are retired people most not all and they really talk about all their college experiences hardly anyone ever talks of the classroom experience they only talk about <laughs> cafe or this or that but nobody talks of the library or the classroom and the real <laughs> learning that happened for me was of two kinds when i was a student there one peer led learning we were talking amongst each other stimulating each other that was the one advantage of being present with them that can even be transferred online to a large extent the other thing was that some of my teachers they were really good mentors so instead of me too much they would stimulate me they would provoke me and they would challenge me and that really helped me learn things in a better way and i think that part we can probably never take away or if we do want to then we must make sure technology replaces that without any change in quality or in the nature of the experience but i think we have overshot our time and unless somebody wants to add something i hand it over to the to the organizers and they can take this forward as they wish thank you very much i really enjoyed this i'm deeply indebted to my panelists and to the audience very enjoyable and for me a great learning experience thank you very much thank you thank you very thank much thank you thank you